hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is evidence and in today's video i am going to show you how to install wsl2 on your windows home and windows pro computer and of course make sure you're using windows 10 and it doesn't matter if you're on windows home or windows pro this process is going to work for you and i'm also going to show you how to install ubuntu on your computer after we go through this process and you'll be able to use Ubuntu like a Linux user. As you can see here, I wrote a blog post on this. You can find it at evidencen.com slash WSL2. And I'm going to put this link in the description too. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. So to begin, we have to make sure that your computer meets all the requirements. All right, if you're using X64 system on Windows, you have to make sure it's version 1903 or higher with build 18362 or higher. And of course, you have to make sure you're on Windows 10 or above. If, you are, if your version of Windows is below Windows 10, this is not going to work. And if your system is using ARM processor instead of Intel processor, then you have to make sure that you are using version 2004 or higher and with this build number or higher. And to check this is very simple. So you just go to system info. And once you're here on system info, it will tell you um, the system type. So X64 or X or ARM64. So X64 or ARM64, depending on, depending on if you're using Intel processors or ARM processors. And then, of course, I have Windows 10, but I have Windows 10 Home. This is how you can tell if you have Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. And this is my build. And my build is higher than this build. So that's good. And so my computer meets um, the requirement. So make sure you go to your system info and make sure your computer meets the requirements before you start this process. So the next step is to make sure that virtualization is enabled on your computer. All right, so there are two ways you can do this. You can um, see this from system info right here. This is where other information is supposed to be, but mine is not displaying right here. But another way to look at it is to look at it through the command line. So just open your command line and type in system info. And then down here where it says Hyper-V requirements, you should see something that looks like this right here, where it says um, VM monitor mode, virtualization, second level address, and data execution. So make sure everything here is yes. And if everything is yes, that's good. If everything is not yes, then you have to Google how to enable BIOS level virtualization for your computer since it, since it varies from device to device. And once you do this step, uh, the first time you do it, it will show, these items will show here. But after going through this process that I'm about to show you to install WSL2 on Windows, then Next time when you check, it's not gonna, sh it's not going to list these items individually. It is just gonna tell you that Hyper V has been detected, and these items will no longer show. So the first time you do this, make sure you check, and if yours says this, then you're good to go as well. So there are two ways to enable WSL2. So before you install WSL2 on your computer. You have to enable some features on your computer first. All right, so to do that, you type in turn Windows features on or off. And then once you are here, you scroll down 
and you see where it says virtual machine platform you click it and then where it says windows subsystem for linux you also click it and then you click ok and after this change is done you have to restart your computer in order for these changes to take effect another option for doing this is you can also do it using code so to enable the same thing we just did using code let me go back to turn windows on and off and let me make sure these items are deselected so I'm going to, I'll go ahead and deselect this and deselect it and click OK and just give it some time and it will give you the same thing whenever you deselect it you have to restart your computer so we're gonna do don't restart and basically the same thing that we did um, above you must want to do the same thing using code you open Windows PowerShell so you do PowerShell and then run as admin and then you can copy this code that I have here and basically this code right here it does the exact same thing as turning the virtual machine on actually you copy this first code this is the first code that you copy and basically this code does the exact same thing as turning the virtual machine on so you can do it from the Windows features or you can do it from PowerShell but I want to show you in both methods so you paste this here and that goes through and now it says it's um, successfully completed alright and then to turn on this future using code you copy this code right here and then go to PowerShell again and type it in all right now it says and um, the operation is successfully completed now if we go back to turn windows features on or off and we scroll down as you can see this feature has been turned on and this feature has been turned on so that's what i'm trying to show you you can do it from this right here or you can do it using code so we're gonna click ok and now for us to move on, we have to first restart our computer. So I'm going to restart my computer. Go ahead and restart your computer and I'll see you back here in like 20 seconds, depending on how long it takes your computer to restart. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Hopefully you successfully restarted your computer. And um, so now the next step is to actually download the WSL tool package okay so first you have to make sure your system meets the requirements you have to make sure your system has Hyper-V third you have to turn on virtualization as well as Windows subsystem for Linux and then you can finally download the package and have it work properly depending on which operating system you have that will determine which package you download so here this is the package you download if you are on intel windows x64 computer if you are on arm 64 computer this is the package you download so since i am on intel x64 computer i'll go ahead and download this package so once you download it go ahead and go to your downloads folder or whatever you downloaded it to double click and run the program and once you finish running the program you just click on finish and that's basically it you have WSL2 right now on your computer but that WSL2 is kind of like useless to you right you can't necessarily use it so um, the way to use it is to download a Linux environment basically and in this situation we are going to download Ubuntu and very quickly right 
I highly suggest you go ahead and set the default version. All right. And I'm going to show you why. Okay. I first, I am not going to set the default version and then I will show you why. Oh, let me say what will happen if you don't set the default version. So let's go ahead and download Ubuntu. All right. So just open Microsoft store. And search for Ubuntu or whatever system you want. You don't have to be take Ubuntu. You can just search um, Linux here. And then there's different Linux versions. Personally, I just use Ubuntu because you know it is the most widely used. So you click on it, then you click on get and then install. If you install Ubuntu without going through all the process we just went through, it's not going to work properly. You just have to wait for it to download. <laughs> So now that we have Ubuntu downloaded, let's go ahead and launch it. And the first time you launch it, this is what it looks like. So now we are going to create a username. I just got my evidence in. Now you're going to create a new password. Depending on how you set up your system, you may have to end up using this password a lot. So I suggest you pick something easy, but not so easy that a five-year-old can guess what it is, if that makes sense. You don't want somebody coming in and doing sudo RF, R RM on your computer or something like that. And when you type your password, it doesn't show. Now you have to enter your password again. All right, so now you've successfully created your password. So now you have Ubuntu and you can do any Ubuntu related stuff that you want to do, or let me say any Linux related stuff like you want to do. So for me, how I've been using this at work is that we have a GitHub repo that uses symbolic links. And symbol symbolic links are like um, Linux file path, file path system. It's mostly based on Linux. If I use my regular Windows command line, um, it's Windows regular command line will convert the symbolic links into something else, and that will end up breaking the repo and nothing will work. All right, so I've been using Windows subsystem for Linux like this to work on Terraform, GitHub, no Terraform, repos that is based on Linux and uses Linux symbolic links in the Terraform system in the uh, in the environment. So the way the repo was set up is set up to use Linux symbolic links and Windows would have broken it. So that's why I've been using Windows subsystem for Linux. So anything that you want to do in Linux, you can do it right here. As you can see, nothing is here. So you can go um, all the way back to root and then um, you can enter any folder that you want. And also, um, if you didn't know this, so if, let me go back one more. If you do, um, CD and then tab, it's gonna do autocomplete for you. So I, I'm hitting tab key on my keyboard. That's how I'm getting this autocomplete. All right, so now let me show you what I wanted to show you earlier. So if you remember I'm um, correctly, I didn't set uh, the default version to be two. 
Now, if you download something like Docker, and on the next video, I am going to show you how to install Docker on Windows. And you need to have WSL2 to install Docker on Windows. If you install something like Docker on Windows, Docker will automatically default to version 2 of WSL. And it's really, really important for you to be on version 2 because there are some things that work in WSL2 that doesn't work in WSL1. So it's very important for you to be in version 2. If you install, if you install Docker, Docker will automatically um, use something like version 2. But sometimes when you install programs like Ubuntu, it doesn't default to version 2 unless you explicitly say this. Unless you say this, it doesn't default to version 2. And let me show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and open the command line. And here I'm using Windows Terminal, which I like a lot. Actually, to check your version, you do WSL dash L dash V. And that's how you check your version. And as you can see right here, it says um, my Docker, right? The Docker I have on my computer is using version two. Okay. And that's because previously I have set the default version to be one. All right. So if you don't um, do this step right here, you might run into a problem where it says something like one for Ubuntu. And I've seen this happen before many times where it says Ubuntu running version one, and then it says Docker version two. And then you might install a different app that's using WSL and it will say version one or version two. So, different apps will take on different versions. That's why it's very important to run this code. WSL set default version two. And I've already run this before. That's why everything is version two already. So make sure you run this code that says WSL set default version two. And if you have any questions about WSL, you can just do WSL help, help, or something like that. <laughs> well, actually it's WSL double help. There we go. <laughs> I mean, even if you type in the wrong command, it will still um, give you the result. But if you need help with WSL2, you just type in that command and you'll be able to get help with WSL2. So um, that's pretty much it on how to install WSL2 on your Windows Home and Windows Pro computer and how to install Ubuntu and how to make sure, verify that your applications are running the correct version. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to install Docker and how to use Docker for data science projects in the following videos. And right here, you can come to this blog, everydaysn.com slash WSL2. Like I said, I'm gonna put it in the description below. You might run into different errors when install installing WSL2. This blog post describes some of the errors you might run into and um, how to find solutions to those errors. In addition to checking out this blog, you can also go to my website, machinelearningeducation.com slash free and sign up here. And here I have many different data science resources. And as time goes by, I add more and more resources to this. So if you ever see a data science video from me and all the notebooks for my data science videos are going to be right here. And you can also support my work by going to machinelearningeducation.com. And here um, you can um, support my work if you want to, no obligations. <laughs> and if you come here to this homepage and I no longer have this, it's gonna be somewhere up here and the links up here. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you like it. If you have questions, let me know in the comment section below. If this video helped you, please leave a thank you and a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and subscribe. Bye.